Good morning, everyone. This is Jazz. I'm so happy to see you here again for day four of the High Vibe Challenge. So as you know, this is not a High Vibe Challenge for you to just feel good and rah, rah, and let's do this. Um, it is, but first, it's about for you to understand the three main cogs in that manifestation wheel that you can control more or less to some varying degrees and that you can affect changes on so that you can take action. Manifestation is not a feeling. Manifestation is not a thought. Manifestation is not only your soul. Manifestation is taking action to make something happen. And you want whatever is surrounding you, your circumstances, your life, whether it's in your relationships and your money, in whichever aspects of your life that you want to, you want, you want a change, you want a transformation. And it won't happen on your own, on its own. It's going to happen with your desire, with your focus, and with your aligned action. Those are the three main things desire, focus, and aligned action. So today we're talking about the aligned action and what it feels like to take aligned action and what it feels like when your ego that we talked about yesterday, your ego is saying, yeah, no, not taking aligned action, not today. It can feel so, it can, there's so many feelings that can come up when ego's in the way as a detractor. It can be anything, but we'll get to see, um, and, and hopefully through that short half hour that we have together, you'll get more clues onto how your ego is detracting you from taking aligned action and what you can do about it. So that's what we're going to cover today. So if you don't know what ego is, go back to yesterday's video if, if you haven't seen it yet, where I explain where ego is. Today, we're defining that just a little bit more in terms of how ego is in your brain, what part of your brain is ego, and what is ego's function. So, as I mentioned yesterday, the nature of your ego is self-preservation. So your ego wants everything to stay the same all the time. So it's kind of a control freak in a way. If something's not broken, why do you want to fix it? And if you read the handout that I had yesterday in the email, you'll notice that the, the ego's definition of it's not broken, let's not fix it, is very different than what your soul thinks in terms of alignment, right? Because your ego likes things to stay exactly the same. So if you're used to surviving poor finances, poor relationships, if you're used to being in, surrounded by people who don't value you, if you're used to having a business that doesn't light you up, but that is the norm that, you know, through action, through your karma, this is what your ego has come to expect as normal, which is like all those poor circumstances, your ego is not going to want to come out of that container because that's a container it knows. It doesn't know what's on the other hand, what's on the other side. It just wants to stay where it is, even if it hurts, because hurt is what your ego knows. Right? So, so you get the difference, whereas your spirit knows that there's access to infinite abundance. There's access to unconditional love. There's access to, to so much goodness for the entire world that's available when we put that step forward. But ego says, no, pain is the norm. So every time that you might want to do an action like going to the gym, eating better, um, taking control over your finances, ego is going to put some barriers into that because it's not going to want the new reality. So that's why the manifestation process at times take a whole lot of time because we need to retrain that ego 
to a new norm. So we have to get out of the comfort zone that ego knows into the new norm. So it's like having that puppy or having a small child inside of us and say, no, it's okay. We choose this. It's going to be better. And you kind of have to have that conversation with yourself all the time, always affirming. Did you practice the affirmation with the feeling? from yesterday's video. So you need to keep affirming that, yes, this new reality, this is what I want and it's okay and it's safe and it's secure and I give myself permission to feel this and this is what I want. And you have to affirm that over and over and over and over again. So that ego finally says, okay, it's not so bad. Maybe I'll go with you. Maybe I'll help you manifest that. But that transition time between like that two year old heels digging, claws in the door frame, say, no, I don't want to go. And the new norm, <clears throat> that is a process of transformation. And depending on how big the transformation is, there's going to be even more resistance. It's going to be even more difficult. So it's at times very difficult to do big changes, big transformations on our own, because it's just so easier to go back to what ego knows and just to quiet the ego down, right? Can you feel that? I'm sure that you've had experiences of ego resistance. So if there's anything that you want to share and kind of out your ego, go ahead in the comments or send me an email and, and share that so that you're really aware of your ego tactics. So talking about the ego tactics, there are the five Fs of um, tactics, of detraction tactics that your ego is going to use. So the ego is that part of the brain right at the base of the skull here. That is like the, re the reptilian brain. That's the first part of the brain that evolved when we were still more animal than human. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that part of the brain deals with survival. With your ability to survive right and that's what we've been saying about ego it's it's surviving certain circumstances and keep doing the same thing because you know that you can survive this so it's that part of the brain so now when we do reiki and we're at the head and we're at this position it feels so good because it it just gives that that love and the healing to that part of the brain so practice this. If you feel a lot of ego resistance, send Reiki, send love to just the back of your head here. It's going to feel so good. So the five F's that are in that part of the brain that the ego really lights up when it does not want to manifest something with you. The first is fear. The second one is fight. The third one is flight. The fourth one is food. And then the fifth one is fornication. Those are the five F's. So with fear, the ego is going to tell you, oh, you don't want this transformation. It's way too scary. And it's going to flood your body with fear response, with the fear hormones. So even if it's something really good for you, like going to the gym, your anxiety level might just spike up and it's going to be fearful as if something really, really bad is going to happen. Um, and just know that that is ego, right? It's that, it's that fear response, it's that ego, it's fear. That's gonna be one of the first thing that ego is going to say is that, no, don't do this, it's too scary. It's way too scary. So you need to know when ego is telling you that. So feel the fear and go back to that embodiment, go back to that affirmation of your desire. Say, yes, I'm feeling the fear and I affirm I'm doing this anyway, right? That's taking radical responsibility. So that ego might tone down the fear and then might want to fight you. And when ego wants to fight you, different things might start manifesting in your life. So again, if it's the example of going to the gym, um, you might find different things in the way that are stopping you from actually getting to the gym. So whether it's something on the road or say, oh no, I wanna take a different road today. And then you end up being a detour and you get to an appointment late. Um, so that's 
well, that's flight more than fight, but there's just, the two are very similar. Ego is just going to fight you back and you're just going to feel like, you know, that those, it's a different hormone. It's a, it's a, it's a fight hormone and you might have um, stomach issues because that's your, your solar plexus chakra that's going to be activated and said, no, I'm not doing this. I think that this is good for me. This is what I wanted, but really that's not what I want. And that's stupid. And it's going to be that, that kind of fight response. The flight response is the running away from your good and running away from what you really want to manifest. And that might be things like sleeping in, sleeping through a morning meeting. Um, suddenly you, you develop a cold or a flu or symptoms of cold or a flu, but you're not really ill, but you still have the symptoms just so that you have an excuse not to show up and do the aligned action. So that might be one way that ego is, is triggering the flight. Then there's food. How many of you use food as an escape mechanism, right? That tub of haagen does, the bag of chips, something else that, oh yeah, I really have that goal. I want to be healthy. I want to go back to an optimal weight. I, you know, I want to feel good. I want to feel strong in my body. I want to age with grace and health. And then there goes a bag of chips, right? Ego is going to either give you a whole lot of junk food options or deprive you of food, right? It's either way on the spectrum. Some people get really nervous and they forget to eat, right? Does that happen to you? It happens to me every once in a while. I'm like in a project and I zone in and I know what's good for me because especially when we do spiritual work, our body needs to be grounded with food. We need to fuel this electrical engine that is our body for us to continue. If we don't eat sufficiently, we cannot carry the spiritual energy through our body. We cannot embody it well enough for the manifestation to happen. If we don't have enough fuel, our engine will not be able to manifest that next level of vibration. When we're spiritual people, I know that being vegetarian is something really popular and you know the right thing to do for a lot of spiritual people. However, remember to eat enough protein. Whatever protein source that you need, your body needs protein to ground the spiritual vibration. So whatever form of protein, make sure that your first meal of the day has protein. And before and after energy healing sessions, have some protein, okay? Whatever source of protein is there for you, have good source of protein. Make sure you have enough of your iron. Your body needs that fuel to be able to maintain the higher vibe. And your ego is going to try to either give you the junk food or to deprive you of food. So be very much aware of that. Funny story, when I received my Reiki level two attunement, and that's like a whole weekend training, and I was feeling so good, so high, like the energy just Oh, so much stuff had been cleared away. I understood so much more about how I am as a spiritual person because there's some stuff I've been doing since I was a kid, but I had no name for that because no one else around me was spiritual, was a healer. So it felt just so good learning that, yeah, people are like this. People do have the high vibes and the, vi and, and, and the intuition and the downloads and uh, learning the vocabulary around that. So as I was driving back from my Reiki training, which is about 45 minutes away, suddenly I had a craving for those golden arches. You know what I mean? And oh, I could see myself with a big juicy burger and the fat running down. And I'm saying like, no, like I can't even eat that. My body does not tolerate that type of food, does not. But suddenly I had that craving 
So that was really interesting to notice that once my vibration was higher and brighter and feeling so good, my body kind of wanted the, not my body, but my ego wanted the junk food kind of say, no, you're not seeing that high vibe, come back to the low vibe. And that's like even lower than when I was before with that junk food, right? So your body might do that. So look at those craving. Hey, Anselina. So that's one thing that you really want to do. It's the, um, take a look at the food that your body is telling you to, to eat. It's going to change. When you change vibe, the food is going to change. So we talked about fight. We talked about flight. Then we talked about food. And the fourth thing, the four F is the fornication. <laughs> which is the the other f of the of the brain so take a look at that that desire that that we talked about from day one and day two and day three that embodied desire but also see where um the most basal root chakra strategies of detraction are going to move you away from your goal okay that's that's the other f so we talked about fear, we talked about fight, talked about flight, talked about food, talked about fornication. So, so that's actually the five Fs of the ego detraction. So take a good look in your life and see where those five Fs come into play when you want to take aligned action. And then just recognize that it's ego. So you just say, oh, that's an ego tactic. I see you, I hear you. And then you go back to that feeling that you've practiced from day one, that embodiment and say, and I'm still choosing this and bring up within yourself that vibration of your desire, your aligned desire. And it's going to help you move from those five Fs into that soul state. That makes sense? So let me know, put in the, the comments um, and if you're on Facebook, you put the comments, I'll get to them as soon as possible. Okay, so those are some of the sabotage mechanisms that your ego is going to use to detract you from taking aligned action. One thing that I've really noticed with entrepreneurs who want to get to the next level or who want to start their business um, the ego detraction can look like this. People get stuck for five months, six months, a year, trying to find the right font, trying to find the right colors, trying to find the right words. And they don't actually get started in, in launching that first page, the first web page. They never go out and meet people. They never share their passion. Because again, it's the fear, the fear is there, the flight is there. Those are all those mechanisms, right? So what is really stopping you from writing that first web page? What is really stopping you from going out and seeing people, finding different relationships from networking, right? Perfectionism is part of those five Fs. There's fear of being out there. Um, your ego, that's a flight. Your ego is going to say, oh, you can't do that, right? You don't have the right colors yet. You don't have the right fonts. You don't have the right funnels. You don't have the right platforms, right? You're familiar with that? So those are ego detractors and they're based on the five Fs. So what I would want you to do, what I challenge you to do today is to take an inventory of all of those excuses that you have that are getting in the way of you manifesting that desired state and kind of measure that against those five Fs. So why is that an excuse? Is it fight? Is it flight? Is it fear? Is it food? You're not nourishing your body? Or does it have to do with fornication? You just kind of want to have fun and you don't really want to go deep into that, um, that manifestation that you want. So that's your challenge today. Make an action of all of your excuses and understand how ego is stopping you from taking action. 
once you understand the mechanism, unfortunately, it's not going to be over because your ego, just loving the ego is so creative. When you discover one way that the ego is blocking you, your ego is going to come up with different ways. But when you know the, the basics, the five Fs, you're always going to say, oh, no, I'm acting out of fear. I'm acting out of flight. And you'll be able to recognize that and then take a light action. Right? So feeling those five Fs and still committing yourself to that aligned action, that is the crux of manifestation, right? So, so far this week, we've talked about the, um, the five, the fifth dimension, which is your soul and knowing how it's best to be soul aligned and knowing how your soul is designed to operate. That's your blueprint so that you know you know your best energy, you know your vibe, you know what's abundant within you and you act within that. Then we talked about your thoughts and how your thoughts are so important, but that it's not the full picture. And now this is about taking aligned action. So those are the big lessons this week. So if you want to take that into um, kind of a grounded language, Let's say that your aligned state, something super simple, your desire, your embodied desire is that you want to have dinner tonight. And you know within yourself that mm, spaghetti would be really, really good tonight. That's your desire. You want spaghetti. If you just think spaghetti, it might not necessarily happen. It might you might have a friend that calls you up and say, hey, I have extra spaghetti. There's like a big pot of sauce on the, on the stove. You want to come over for dinner. Like it could happen, but not always. But just, just having that call from your friend isn't giving you the spaghetti either because you had to take aligned action and actually drive yourself to your friend's place to eat the spaghetti, right? So universe can have different synchronicities for you, people calling you or you win a meal at the restaurant. So that's still at the fifth level because you have not eaten the spaghetti yet. It's just that that alignment that yes, spaghetti is good for you. But the thought is that your, your thought, the 4D is about the strategy. So yes, I'm going to make spaghetti for dinner tonight. And oh, there's like, I got a frozen Tupperware of spaghetti in the in the freezer. So I'm going to have to take that out and thaw it. And then I'm going to have to boil the water. And you can think of all the steps that you need to, to take to make spaghetti for tonight. And how many people are going to be in your house? Are the kids going to come over? Are you going to be eating on your own? So your mind, the 4D is going to strategize everything. But your strategy is still not the manifestation, right? So that's why a lot of entrepreneurs stay stuck at the 4D. It's just always a strategy, the font, the funnels. Um, and so many of us, we have all like those great intentions and you know, like my students tell me, yeah, I know I should do that. Yeah, I know, but that's a 4D and they stay stuck there. They don't actually take action. So if you really want to have the spaghetti, that's in the 3D, that is going to the restaurant, that is, going over to your friends that, that called you up out of the blue because they had spaghetti, or that is actually getting up, going to the fridge, the freezer, going to the stove and making the spaghetti, right? So that's a really easy, simple, oversimplified perhaps way of understanding those different levels of manifestation. So the manifestation happens when you take that action and it's actually happening in 3D, right? Like we mentioned yesterday, like, or today, it's the actual eating of the spaghetti. It's the actual money in the bank account. It's not extra thoughts of money. It's you want it manifest. So you need to take action. And for that, you need to know how you sabotage yourself. So there's also, and I'm going to conclude with this, I'm just noticing the time. Um, one of the things that spiritual people say is that um, they're not sure if feeling the fear is part of um, being misaligned with ego, being misaligned with their spirit rather, or if it's an ego resistance, right? 
But just think of this for a moment. When you're meditating or you're just wondering and thinking and strategizing, hmm, I'm not sure if this is fear, if this is misalignment, or if this is my ego, or if this is that, and there's a lot of the worry and a lot of the fears going on, what's really happening? <laughs> it's your ego detracting you, using spirituality as an escape mechanism. Ego is really good at that. So if you have to kind of mull over, like, I'm not sure if I'm really aligned, if I should do this, if I should do that, those shoulds, red flag, ego. All right. So be very much aware of that. You're, if you practiced, like I challenged you earlier this week, and you practice that feeling of embodied desire, that is your soul. So just know that in everything else, all the thoughts, all the shoulds, all everything else, that's ego detracting you. Okay. In the handout that I'm going to send you later today, um, I'm going to give you um, descriptions of what it sounds like and what it feels like when it's the voice of ego versus the voice of spirit. So you'll get that in the handout later today. So make sure if you're not on the email list that um, you get on the email list to receive that. It's just going to help you know the difference within yourself when you hear um, your self-talk you, you'll know if it comes from ego or from spirit. So I'm just quickly looking at my notes. Oh, yes, I did want to talk about that. Numerology um, and taking action and taking transformation. It's just something interesting that I've noticed in about the 10 years that I've been coaching people. It's um, the length of time that it can take for transformation and how that relates to numerology. So this is what I've noticed. It's not scientifically tested. It's just what I've noticed with my clients. So in numerology, number one is, um, is it first taking action? So it's very black or white. It's very, yes, I'm taking action. It's like the courage is the first step. So the first time that you do something, it might be really, really easy. Your ego is not going to put up a whole lot of resistance. Like the first time you go to the gym, when you buy that membership, the first time that you have one of those green smoothies, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of resistance because the ego is just going to think, oh, this is like just a one-off. She's not really serious. So there's not going to be a whole lot of of resistance. The so same thing when you start a coaching program, the first time it's like, oh, this is good. And, and you have the whole strategy and you have the whole feelings. So the second time that you do something or the second month that you're in, um, then there's going to be just a little bit of balance. The ego is just going to say, um, you know, I think that she wants to be serious about this transformation. Maybe I'll start with those five Fs and just flooding with those hormones in the body to do some red flags, right? Because there's a, there's um, the two is about that that balance and the juggling, the being on the fence thing. Are you going to do that? Or are you going to do that? It's, it's that being on the fence. The third time, or the third month, or the third session of coaching, um, then the emotions are going to kick in. So that can be any one of the five F's or it can be something else. It can be a big emotional release. Um, but the third month, there's there can be just a whole lot of really, really deep healing. It's on the emotional level or the resistance on the emotional level, depending on where you're on your path. The fourth time the, or the fourth month of coaching um, that's usually when the ego says, oh, I think she's serious about this. So then you start building some strategies to put in place so that the higher vibration of your desire actually solidifies into a new strategy. Because now the ego says, okay, I bet, guess I better come along for the ride. And it just starts putting the new strategies in place. So that happens pretty much only the fourth time you do this, the fourth time you practice, or the fourth month of coaching. The f number five is about transformation. That is a fork in the road. That is when the ego says, well, she's really, really serious about this. So 
okay, we're doing this and your ego is on board. So this is when the vibes really transform. It's on the fifth month of coaching. It's on, it's a fifth time that you practice something, the fifth time that you really hear something. That's when the click happens. Okay. And the six, number six is more about about the integration. It's about taking a journey. It's about starting over like the wheel of life, but with a little bit more wisdom. So um, this is the journey moving forward. So most of the ego um, resistance is going to happen between month zero and month five. And then month six is going to be more gelled into your new way of being and doing things. So that's why most of my coaching programs are six months long. It's to support you, support your ego, support your transformation. Um, and so that it sticks, so that it's not just a breakthrough moment, so that it's not just an aha moment, because that happens really quickly, but that you actually train yourself to embody every day this new vibration of that which you desire and that it sticks in your life and that this becomes your, your desired state becomes your new normal and not the normal that your ego currently knows, that your soul knows that that's not sufficient. Your soul wants more. So we're going to transfer, to transmute, to bring you to this, this other desired state. And it's a journey. Um, I would love to tell you that this is easy that, you know, it's all rainbows and unicorns and lollipops. But the truth is, it's not easy, because ego brings a whole lot of resistance. And people, you know, your ego is going to feel like kicking and, and, and screaming. And my clients can get angry with me. And, you know, they, they can just blame me for different things. But I know that that's not about me. It's about the ego resistance. So just think of you with your clients as well. If you're a coach, if you're a healer, think of the transformation process. Just go back and see how, see the, the amount of time that it takes for someone to really integrate and to really hold the new vibration. And that's going to be interesting. And I uh, challenge you as well to, to work with a coach, to work with a therapist and witness your own transformation process, witness your own ego resistance. Um, and that's going to give you clues as well. If you're a healer from your own transformation process, how you can transfer that knowledge then to your own client base. Okay. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. It's the 3D. The 3D is a realm of taking aligned action. This is the manifestation. Remember, we're here as divine co-creators to anchor that higher vibration on earth. And the only way that we can anchor this is through our beingness. It's not just through meditation. It's not just through wishful thinking. It's through our action. That anchors it in the physical world. That's what we're here to do. That's what I'm here to help you do. So... The five, the, the three cogs, so you got the 5D as a soul, the fourth D, which is, which is your thinking, and the 3D, which, which is your action. Those are the three cogs that you can move to manifest. And then your ego is going to kick in resistance with those five Fs. Um, and your role is to keep practicing that embodied feeling, that embodied desire, and keep taking action toward that. I'm gonna wrap it up here, letting you know that tomorrow there is going to be a really yummy, yummy meditation. I call it the Buddha self meditation. This meditation is going to help you activate. The, that that energy to magnetize and attract to you that which you desire. So let's meet again tomorrow at 11 for this meditation and it's going to conclude this week of the High Vibe Challenge. I want to thank you so much for being here today. Again, if you have questions, if you have comments, aha moments, please share this, them with me. I love hearing from you. 
Um, it's one of the things that I don't like so much about being an entrepreneur is being all alone in my office with perhaps a cat or the dog <laughs> coming in to visit. So please um, let me speak human <laughs> with someone and send me an email. All right. I love you all. Big hugs and see you tomorrow. Bye.